this video, we're going to demonstrate how to set up and use both the SMS, text message, and voice call options for multi-factor authentication, also known as MFA. First, you'll need to navigate to account.wsu.edu and log in with your network ID, or NID, and your password. On the following page, you'll find all of your WSU account settings, including your password, security image, and most importantly, your multi-factor authentication options, which are listed in the box titled Extra Verification. To edit these settings, navigate to the top right of this page, locate the green Edit Profile button, and select it. This will prompt you to re-verify your password. Enter it into the field and select the Verify button. If you currently have any other MFA methods activated, you'll be prompted to select one of them on the following page. Any MFA options that you have set up will always be accessible at login by clicking the drop-down arrow to the right of this MFA icon. In this case, we'll choose the Google Authenticator option, enter the code displayed on our smartphone app, and select Verify. Once you've authenticated, you'll find yourself back at the Account Settings page, where now all of the settings are unlocked and able to be changed. By the way, since we're configuring MFA options that involve your phone number, you might want to make sure that the number you have on file here is the right one. If not, you can quickly edit this information by selecting the Edit button. Once you've double-checked your phone number, navigate down to your multi-factor authentication settings in the Extra Verification panel. Again, we're going to look at both the SMS and the voice call options. So let's start with the SMS option by selecting the Setup button located to the right. On the following page, select the Setup button. Next, you'll enter your cell phone number and select the Send Code button. Now, check your text messages. You should have gotten a text containing your unique code, and if not, it should be there any second. Though, an important note on this, just like any other text message, the time it'll take for the text to get to your phone depends on a few outside factors, such as the data demand your cell service provider is experiencing at the time, the actual cell coverage in your current location, etc. Anyway, now that you've received and entered the SMS code, select the Verify button, and there you go. Your SMS MFA settings are all set up. Now, let's look at how to set up the voice call option. It's actually pretty much the same exact process as what we just did to set up the SMS option. From the Account Settings page, you'll navigate down to the Extra Verification panel again, select the Setup button next to Voice Call, select Setup on the following screen, enter your chosen phone number, and press the Call button. In a few seconds, you should get a phone call providing you with your unique code, and it'll sound something like this. Using our phone verification system, your code is 3, 4, 1, 1, 1. Once again, Once you've entered the code given, select the Verify button and your voice call MFA option is ready to go. After either one of these setup processes, you'll be automatically taken back to the account settings page, where you'll notice that all of your settings panels are still unlocked. To lock them back up, navigate to the bottom left of this window and select sign out. So that's it. These two MFA options are pretty quick and easy to set up. That said, simple as they are, there are some important things to consider with these two. First, as you know, the ITS security team strongly, strongly encourages users to set up at least two MFA options, and this is because for any number of reasons, certain MFA options you've set up might not be usable at the time, so it's good to have a backup. That said, the SMS and voice call options both rely on cell service, so if reliable cell service isn't always available for you, having only these two options configured might be a risky idea. And on a similar note, if you can, use two different numbers for these options. For instance, if you have an office phone, it would be smart to use that number for your voice call option and then your cell phone number for your SMS. That way, if you lose or break your cell phone, you're not totally locked out of your account. And another thing to consider is that even if you do have good cell service, again, some users may experience delays in receiving their code via text message if they're trying to log in at a time when cellular data is in high demand. For instance, if your most common login scenario is right at the beginning of class, meaning there are probably lots and lots of other people around you also trying to log in at the same time, well, your code might be a little slow getting to you. And in some cases, the code might even be expired by the time you do get it, which can be super frustrating. But these are just a few things to consider as you decide what your preferred MFA options are. Our preferred method, by the way, is most definitely the OctaVerify app's push option, which you can learn more about in the description below. Okay, now that our voice call and SMS settings are configured, let's test them out by heading over to the MFA test site at mfa.it.wsu.edu. This is a really neat tool for simply testing your various MFA settings, and it's set up just like the usual WSU login screen. So let's select our new SMS option from the drop-down menu and select send code. Okay, there's the code. We'll enter it into the login screen, select the verify button, and success! Looks like our SMS settings are working properly. And we'll just skip testing the voice call settings today since it's pretty much the same exact process, except of course with a phone call instead of a text message. So that's how to set up and use the SMS and voice call options for multi-factor authentication. If you still have questions about how to configure your MFA settings, reach out to the Crimson Service Desk at crimsonservicedesk.wsu.edu or check out the self-help article links in the description below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to ITS on YouTube so you can stay in the loop about videos like this one and more.